stay there. Well, good noon time, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Big E. Peg, get up there. And welcome to our 100th anniversary here at the Big E. It's a really special year for us in case they haven't known that already, but we're real proud to be here during this celebration. My name is Becky Peterson, and I'm from Leiden, Massachusetts, which is just up in Franklin County. And we've been here... <laughs> We've been here with our border collies since 1989 to do this demonstration here in the Mallory, and, and we're real proud to, to keep it up, and, and we look forward to it every year. Um, and for the next 20 or 30 minutes or so, uh, we hope to in, entertain you and enrich you uh, here in our agricultural complex. So let me go ahead and introduce my girl. Here, Peg. Right here. Come. Come here. There. You know what she wants. This is Peg. Peg is my female border collie, and she's my, my go-to girl when it comes to the demonstration here at the Big E. Um, she's nine years old. On your feet. On your feet. On your feet. Come on, Peg. On your feet. Well, she's, she's working. Um, but you see that she's rough coated like most of the border collies you see. We do have smooth coats out there and they're, they're short haired like a lab maybe, a uh, laboratory retriever. But Peg is your usual uh, classic rough coat. She's black and white like you'd expect. She's got a blaze on her face, a collar uh, partway around her neck, a white belly, white legs. Um, and she's got three white hairs on the tip of her tail and that makes her legal. She's also got brown on her forelegs and uh, a little bit on her hind legs and over her eyebrows, and that makes her a tricolor. So she's got three colors in her coat, and that's just fine. We don't really care what the Border Collie looks like because all of the traits, 90% uh, of the traits that we look for in a Border Collie come from up here. Okay, We look for their, their willingness and their... their uh, patience and their stock sense and all of the things that go together with with what we do to to make them a good working dog uh, certainly we need them to be sound and uh, fault free but uh, most of the traits are behavioral so that's what we look for now let's see peg is nine years old We've had her since she was a little pup. I've trained her myself. We have a hundred head of sheep on our farm in Leiden, and, and she helps me every day if we're moving sheep from one pasture to another or or moving them in to run them through a foot bath or shear or gather them up so we can work on them to come to the biggie. That's what we do. She's our best help. All right. Now, the Border Collie is bred in Scotland, and they're the best sheepdog there is. There's no breed that's like the Border Collie that can do the, the variety of things that the Border Collie can do. They're known as a gathering dog or a heading dog. and In other words, they'll go out behind a group of, of stock and bring it to us where some of the other herding breeds are healing breeds and they'll get in behind cows in front of you and bark a little bit and nip heels a little bit and push the cows away. So they're great for working in a stockyard or where we have alleys and, and narrow runways for animals to move behind, move down. But a uh, border collie would be great for gathering a hundred sheep out in that parking lot without any cars because they would get them all together and then bring them quietly in. So that's what the border collie is about. We do a lot of demonstrations. Uh, we, we do use sheep at a lot of events. This is a, just a little bit too confining in this little arena. Uh, it's not big enough for sheep really, so we have miniatures. There are other miniature sheep, but they're not like mine. Back off. Back off. These are my miniature sheep. They're very unique miniature sheep. Lie down. Lie down. These are Indian runner ducks. And we love the Indian runner for this kind of work uh, for a few different reasons. They're very lightweight. They weigh about three and a half pounds a piece. Lie down. And we'll put them on the scale for you after and prove it. Lie down. Stay. Urgh. Stay. She says, I can't. <laughs> you stay. Um, lie down. Stay there. <laughs> she, 
getting away with murder here. Lie down now. Stay. Uh, a free one. Head. Lie there. Okay. Lie down. Come here. Head, come. Now lie down. Okay, the Indian runner duck it stands up really straight and tall. Their center of gravity is right at the bottom. And they stand up straight and tall like a wine bottle on legs so they don't topple over. Um, some of our heavier meteor ducks kind of lean forward and they waddle in their fronts or their heavier parts. But the, the Indian runner stands up really well so they don't fall over and they can run really fast. And they generally stay together in a nice tight little group. They don't generally wander off on their own. So it makes them really good for this kind of work. Uh, they discuss everything. You'll see that. All right, we'll gather them up. Stay back. Time. Lie down. So this is what the dog does. She gathers. You watch her work. Lie down. Her um, body language, lie down, stay, stay, is a bit intimidating. Lie down, pig. <laughs> a bit intimidating. Uh, she resembles a predator, She like a coyote or a wolf or a fox. She stalks along behind the ducks, and the ducks don't really want to be within, you know, an arm's reach of it, so they move away. She has no intention of... of um, Touching them, biting them, getting one for lunch, she, that's gone. That instinct is, is pretty much gone. But there, she has an impul, uh, obsessive and impulsive desire to gather and control things that move. And as you watch her work, it's that body language where that stalking motion um, is intimidating and they move away. She also is, you notice, staring at them very intently. She'll never look away unless I speak to her from behind. She'll never look away from them. That's what we call eye in a border collie. They're a strong-eyed dog. We, we, now lie down. So... You watch Peg, she'll move them around nicely. You won't see her chase them. If you want to see a dog chase ducks, you bring your dog here. I charge by the duck. And believe me, that will happen. Lie down. Lie down. You watch her think about this one that just thought it would be independent. Back off. Lie down. We lie down. There. Whoa, a chicken. <laughs> Away. Lie down, pig. Come back. Lie down. Away. Lie down. Lie down. So when we're working with this, this group, whether it's ducks or sheep or cattle or goats or hogs, lie down. Lie down now. <laughs> Lie down. We're working on, on controlling their escape route. Okay, the dog goes behind. Lie down. The dog goes behind and puts a little pressure on. They just want to move away. Uh, and so we can direct them to where we want them to go. And in, in instances like this with our little chute and our, our ramp and our little tunnel, we just give them an escape route work behind it. That's the only option. They escape through the tunnel or up over the bridge. Bye. All right. Lie down. Now, this... Lie down. You're hearing this duck squawk here. That's quacking. Uh, that's the female duck in this group. I think the rest are drakes. Lie down. We have 11 ducks with us, and whatever goes in the box at demo time is what comes out, and it's very random. So... They, they do not all have names, and I do not know them all by sight because they're so similar. Lie down. But I know that there's one female out there. because Lie down. She's the loud one. Okay. Now, we talk about gathering. Here, Peg. That'll do. I'll tell you a little bit about the different things the dog is doing. Peg, come. Okay, imagine. Oh, that'll work anyway. Lie down. Imagine if I was out here on the other side of our campers 
and my sheep were over by the trees, I could send Peg, without all of your cars, <laughs> I could send Peg over there and she would gather those sheep. If there was a hundred of them and they were all spread out grazing, she would still be able to put them together and bring them home. And it doesn't, it doesn't really matter how far it is as long as the dog can hear the whistle and, um, or think for itself and do what it was originally asked to do, it would do a very nice job. So in, in spite of the fact that the ducks have gone up there uh, where they feel very comfortable, we'll send Peg the length of this here parking lot and bring, the sh bring them home. We, that's called an outrun. Lie down. Lie down. So she, lie down. So she just made an outrun, got in behind the ducks, and made a lift, which is their first contact with the animals. And, and so she lifted them. And then what we just finished here is what we would call a fetch. Okay, so when a dog, Border Collie plays fetch, it's different from a lot of your other fetch playing dogs. And you see that when, when I move around, she's most happy Lie down. when she's on the other side of them. Okay, because she's the other part of this fence. I'm part of the fence, and she's part of the fence. Lie down. And as I move around, you just watch her work back and forth or around the corner, depending on what I do, and she'll hold those ducks to me. She'll never look away. Watch her work back and forth because she senses some kind of motion. She senses a desire maybe for a duck to go off to the left or a duck to go off to the right. Lie down. So I can walk all over. Whoops, careful. <laughs> Lie down. We go anywhere. We've even been in a parade down Main Street in Greenfield, Massachusetts, with our sheep. So that we can do it. Lie down. Lie down. These ducks like to be either in that box, and I don't blame them, because they have a little stage fright, or up here on, on this platform. And we, we taught them that generally when we put them up there, they'll, we don't bother them much, and they'll stay there. They're very comfortable. They feel very secure. Uh, when they're quiet, quiet I mean standing still by themselves, they'll discuss everything. They'll get together and decide what's going to be next. Oh, we're going to head for that. Whoop, somebody moved. Oh, the dog. Lie down. Lie down. Uh-oh. Come back here. <laughs> it's like being uh, at the Big E with your group. You don't go off alone. You get lost. Okay. Lie down. Now, we'll let them do whatever they want. Lie down. <laughs> Free. Um, as we were working with Peg, we got this instinct in mind, and we got their instinct in mind. And when we need to do things, we need to be able to talk with Peg. Uh, lie down. And give her some instructions so that we do the right thing as we're going about our chores. Um, so... Uh, the first and most important of four basic commands that we'll talk about, lie down, is it. <laughs> lie down. That puts the dog on the ground. All right. If she's laying on the ground, she's not moving on to them. She's not putting any pressure. She's the one that's cranked up. They're quite relaxed there. Look, they can read. They're the smartest ducks here in the grounds because they can read. There they go. Ha. Uh -huh. Um, so lie down is our brake pedal. That's how we slow down. That's how we stop. That's how we kind of put the uh, keep things quiet. So lie down. That's our that's our stop. When we want to move forward and just put pressure on them from whatever position she is, we just ask Peg to walk up. Walk up. Lie down. Lie down. Walk up. Walk up. Walk up, walk up, walk up, walk up. Okay, now she's taken it upon herself to cast around. That's fine. Lie down. So that's our, our lie down, lie down, lie down. That's better. <laughs> okay. Um, 
So that's our, 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 our stop and go, is lie down <laughs> and walk up. Lie down, pig. Oh yeah, she said, forgot. All right, then we need to steer. We can go left and right. Lie down. And the dog knows her left and right, and she'll go to one side or the other. If I need her to go around behind me and go to the uh, platform, well, it won't happen before they get there. Oh, look at she's done it already. Anyway, if she had waited for me, I would have said to her, come by. Lie down. Lie down. So that term, come by, is for her to go to her left. If I direct it at her, lie down. Come by. See? She'll go to her left. Come by. Come by. Come by. Good girl. Lie down. Stay there. If I need her to go to her right, I'll say this to her. Peg, away. <laughs> She's doing it her way. Peg, lie down. Away to me. That's her right. And it's always a dog's left and right. It's not mine. So she's working in a, either a counterclockwise or a clockwise direction. So it's always her left and right. So sometimes it can be kind of fuse, confusing. Lie down. Of what, what command to give. But after a while of doing this, it's just natural for me. Lie down. Walk up. Lie down. Peg, lie down. And she's, uh, she's had the weekend off because we've been showing sheep and things. Um, so she's pretty cranked up, pretty independent, knows how to do the show all by herself. Lie down. Come by. Lie down. Wait to me. Lie down. Lie down. Come by. Lie down. They didn't stop to read that time. Uh-oh. There. They're fe Lie down. They're feeling a little tight pressure here. They came out from under there, and there's a whole lot of two-legged two uh, animals, and they're n very nervous about that. Lie down. So it's okay. Don't anybody move. Lie down. There. Now they feel better. Whoop, except for this one. No. Back off. We're going to work them back up into the funnel. This little hen here, this light colored one, she's independent. We lie down. There. Work them up. She, they, they kind of wanted to t briefly think about squirting off to the right there, but she shut that down immediately. She was smart about it. Okay, wait to me, Peg. Okay, so everybody understands the commands of stop and go and left and right, and that's how we get real uh, precise work done. Lie down. Okay. Lie down. The next thing, uh, we'll, we'll, we're going to rest a minute, but after, after those, um, lie down, lie, lie, lie. If I shut her down and get right where she wants to, um, I'm in line with the ducks. She says there's not, not an easy way for me to get to their heads because mom's right here in the way and there's, I'm not really sure which would be the smartest way to go. So here, I have a little control. All right, um, I do use a whistle also and that helps uh, with our overhead noise and our long, long, long distances, three to 500 yards away from our dogs. It'll carry over the wind. It also doesn't convey any emotion. Uh, if I try to shout to my dog to make her hear me, she might think I'm shouting at her instead of to her. She might get offended. So here, our whistle will work better. All right, so we're going to uh, use the same basic commands with a whistle. We're Lie down. And we're going to weave the ducks in and out of these pumpkins. Well, look at... She's the boss, that hen. All right. We're going to weave in and out of the pumpkins using the whistles. See if you can figure out what they are. Somebody got left behind. 
She left her group at the Big E. She got stuck behind a baked, baked potato stand, and she's lost. Yep, out. They went that way. See, ducks don't like to be alone. She's yelling at them. <laughs> All right, I think we're where we can start. Yucky. <laughs> we will start again. Lie down now. Lie down. Pay attention. Lie down. Come on. Play. Oh, there they are. Oh. Try again. decided she didn't want to play. So, okay. We're going to give her a break. Come by. Lie down. We'll put them up here on the picture stand and let them regroup and rest. Walk up. Lie down. We lie down. Sometimes this happens. Lie down. That'll do. Okay. We'll give them and Peg a chance to catch their breath, relax a little bit, lie down. And she'll be happy there because they're there. We'll talk a little bit about the Border Collie and their general attitudes. This is an ex obsessive and compulsive desire to gather and control things that move, whether it's ducks or sheep or cattle or whatever, Canada geese even, um, or a tennis ball or the frisbee or the mailman or the neighborhood's chickens or the kitty cat. All these things are exciting to a border collie and they will um, often attempt to do things while they're bored that we don't really appreciate. All right, so they can be very busy. Um, they can be destructive when they're bored and young and energetic and don't have any boundaries. They'll chew and they'll dig. They'll work on your windowsills. When the kids are riding bikes outside, they'll be up on the windowsills and trying to see out, and they'll be scratched and chewed up. Um, so their dog that's a... Um, Lie down now and just rest. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> they're a dog that needs direction and some boundaries and some supervision. You don't leave them running around loose because they will get into the road and try to herd cars and the mailman and bikes and joggers and things. So they're just a real busy, uh, lie down now, a real busy dog that wants a job. They can be taught to do a lot of different things. They're excellent obedience dogs. They're super agility dogs and frisbee dogs. That'll do. They even use them for tracking and search and rescue because they're so dedicated. That'll do now. Lie down. She hates it when we stop. 
Um, so they're a very uh, versatile dog, but they're a very high energy dog and they require a lot of supervision and time. Uh, we don't recommend that they go into families with real busy, young, active children because and we know that they have fast running feet and their voices are higher and they wave their arms a lot and it's just a lot of activity and the dog kind of fries with that and he tries to put it into order and herd little kids and that doesn't work and somebody's going to get their pant legs nipped or their fingers. So that's one of the reasons we just, if you're looking for a pet border collie and you have uh, toddlers and kids under, say, six, it's probably a good idea to wait because they continue to herd about whatever comes along. Okay, it's a hot, humid day. See, the ducks are a little warm. We're going to do just a little bit of work here on uh, how we go about training a border collie. Uh, we won't do it very long because the ducks are warm and Peg's warm and we're all warm. Um, these things, these dogs start to work and have instinct when they're three or four months of age. We get our puppies when they're about eight weeks. We bring them into the house, into our hearts, into the family, and we teach them uh, their name. We teach them the word no. We teach them to come when they're called. We teach them to sit and to lie down and to stay and lots of other things. Um, get into their crate, go to bed, jump into the truck, um, do different things. Uh, keep them learning while they're growing up through those little preteen years. And when the uh, we, we look to put the same foundation of training on that you should be putting on your pet dogs. Okay, we want to have a real good relationship, real good working relationships with our dogs when we start to work them. All right. And then when they're 8 to 10 to 12 months of age, a little older, a little younger, all depending on the individual dog, we'll put them on some quiet sheep. And all I have here is some kind of warmish ducks, but it'll work. Stay there. And we'll just give you a quick demo, quick idea of how we go about starting them. In the beginning, our dog is probably going to run through the middle of the sheep, chase a little bit because it looks like it would work. They soon figure out it's kind of uh, chaotic. It doesn't, doesn't feel very productive to the dog, and they suddenly figure out the best way for me to have control of these sheep is to stay on the other side of them, and they'll work them toward me, and we just walk around and teach the dog a little stock sense and a little balance. And first thing you know, they're on their way. All right, so we'll do just a little bit here. You go with the group or go home. Lie down. I'm actually, if I can capture her, I will put her in the box, and she'll just be really loud, but she won't be tired. She's figured out a bad habit. <laughs> All right, back off. So, you see the dog wants to be on the other side. Lie down. I'll keep pushing her back like I would a puppy so that they're not right on top of them. Come on. Come on. There. I would say back off, back off, back off, back off, there. Give them room, they'll work nicer. There, good girl. Lie down. And as I move around to my left, the ducks feel like they could go that direction, so she fixes it and stays on that other side. And if I want to change directions, I just will. And it causes the dog to move to the other direction because it works. Lie down. Back off. And we walk around an awful lot with a few sheep and a young dog and we can actually walk up through a lane or actually put sheep out to pasture and go through a, a, a planned movement of sheep even with a young one. Lie down. I'll walk to my left. She goes to her left. I stop. She'll stop. I'll go to my left. I'll go to my right. Lie down. And when they get, lie down. 
They get very smart about that. They get what we call stock sense, and they learn to respond correctly um, only because it's what is productive and what works nicest. Lie down. And then eventually we just put words with that. We put our left and right words with a, a movement they've already learned. And first thing you know, they know left and right. They know combine away to me. And they're doing very well. Lie down. Lie down. Lie down. And they want their picture taken. Um, after about a year of working like this and extending our distances and the different situations and uh, working in different weather conditions, uh, because it will make a difference, um, and working different kinds of livestock, cattle and sheep, and different things, and in different places, we have a dog that uh, can go to work on another farm. We have a dog that probably could um, do some competitions and sheepdog trials, and if they're really good, they can come here to the Big E and do a demonstration for all of you. Come by, come by, easy. It's pretty tight there, come by. Lie down, lie down. Wait to me, there, lie down. Lie down, lie down. She says, come on in here, it's really quiet. It's really nice. There's no dog in here. <laughs> Please. Now lie down. Walk up. Lie down. And they'll get up close and they'll say, oh, another foot or two, they'll see the box. <laughs> and they'll go in. We, we, lie down. Walk up. So there you go, folks. I hope you've enjoyed our presentation. I know it. Lie down. I know it was a bit erratic, but sheep, we're all a little rusty. We've been showing sheep for two days and not really thinking about working dogs, so that's the way it works. But thanks very much for coming. I hope you have a good time at the Big E. Please get around and visit with my friends here, the sheep exhibitors. We've got sheep from, uh, I'm sure, as south as Pennsylvania and as far west as Illinois and maybe beyond. Uh, thank you. Uh, and get around and, and see the different breeds that are here on display for you. There's uh, Ashier cattle and Jersey cattle. Those are both dairy breeds up here. And we've got beef cattle moving in. And behind you is our fiber nook where we have our different, uh, our different uh, fibers that our animals produce for our clothing use. So I hope you'll get around to the Big E today and, and see all of our different exhibits and enjoy the, enjoy the cr crowd. There's not much of a crowd. It's perfect fair weather. So thanks very much. You've been a terrific audience.